What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 76 and we start today's episode off with some player training here for Marco, Ryan Tala and also Ruben Loftus-Cheek as well for coming into our first game of today's episode here away at the Etihad Stadium to take on Manchester City in a big game in the Premier League as fourth place will take on first place. Us leading the league right now, trying to do everything we can with just nine games to go to stay top of the table. City coming to this game you would feel really do have to win in order to get themselves back in the title race. They're 12 points behind us as they're in fourth we're in first but look at the teams that have been put out by both City and Watford coming into this game this is because two days ago both teams had a fixture in the Premier League can't remember who City were playing but for us we took on Leicester just two days ago and I mean we had to make loads of changes as did City as well so there were some good first team players out there for both teams but either way much changed size for both City and Watford not much really happened though until the 36th minute when the first goal was scored by City really really poor defending from me here we just split down the middle and as David Silva went through one on one he slotted it past Jack Butland and made it 1-0 so not the best of starts in this game wasn't really doing too much and then David Silva opening the scoring for City was not good to see and on the stroke of half time it could have been 2-0 to City as I hear Nacho gets on the ball here the young striker goes for goal but Butland turns it behind for a corner with a good save and keeps it at 1-0 so City won what for nil was the score going into the break I had done absolutely nothing in the first half five shots for City two on target and 64% possession as well I was all over the place really and in the second half as well City once again started brightly I hear Nacho gets on the ball and goes for goal, but once again he is denied by Jack Butler and turning behind for a corner. Good save there by our skipper. And in the 68th minute, a rare chance for us to get ourselves back in the game. Lloyd Isgro finds Birch and Traore here. He plays it back to the former Southampton winger, down the right hand side, back inside the former Chelsea man. Traore goes for goal. It's a really good save by the goalkeeper Gunn, turning it behind for a corner and keeping it at 1 0. So City won what for nil as things do. We did start coming out of our shell a little bit in the second half, looking for a goal back in the game, trying to get ourselves the equalising goal. And as Danny Rose finds a knack, he Williams here down the left hand side. He has to pace on Otamendi, keeps on going, takes it around the centre back, crosses the ball to the far post, and at the far post, who's there to head it in? Well, he scored today for Watford. Troy Deeney once again getting a goal and making it City 1 and Watford 1. He came off the bench and Deeney gets the goal to equalise for us here at the Etihad Stadium and I've said it so many times and I'll say it again Deeney is a player who we just cannot afford to get rid of because he is just so reliable he comes off the bench to score here whenever we need a goal we can always rely on Troy Deeney so City won Watford won we are back on level terms and a big point this would be for us if we could hold on to it in the title race but sadly for us sometimes you get a lot of luck in career mode and you just have to thank the career mode gods but sometimes the game just doesn't seem to want to wouldn't let you win or get any kind of result whatsoever and that's what happened here City get the ball inside and as De Bruyne goes for goal with nine minutes to go we just equalized a couple minutes prior to this one the Belgian goes for goal and it takes a massive absolute massive deflection off Joe Davis's leg and Butlin is going the other way I think Butlin would have saved the shot from De Bruyne initially but instead Davis sticks out a right leg it deflects past him into the opposite corner I didn't control Davis but that was an automatic block and sadly it wrong foots Jack Butlin and goes goes in to the back of the net. So Kevin De Bruyne is going to claim it, but it took a huge deflection off Joe Davis, and that is the goal that wins Manchester City the game. So final score, City 2, Watford 1. I will be honest, City did play better than us in this game. There's no denying that. Butler made a couple of great saves. They had nine shots and four on target compared to our two on two, although I think we actually had three or four shots, really. Just don't think they got registered. But either way, City did play better. I'm not going to deny that. Still, with a goal and assist was my man in the match, but, you know, that, that deflected goal, man. Seriously, I was just sitting there thinking, oh, God, Davis, if you just stood still. Butland probably would have saved it. We would have held on for a point. That would have been a big result for us. City probably would have been out of the title race then. There would only be eight games to go and there would still be 12 points behind us. But sadly for us, the goal does go in. And I really do believe that the pressure is starting to get to us now. You know, we're in three competitions. We're still top of the table in the Premier League, but beginning to lose our lead in terms of points. In the FA Cup, for the second game of today's episode here, we're taking on City away at the Etihad Stadium. We're in the quarterfinals, of course. And we want to try and defend our trophy and win it once again. Be the first competition we win back-to-back -back with Watford. And of course, in the Champions Champions League, you'll see our round of 16 second leg in the next game against Ajax. We're still in that competition as well. So we're in three different competitions. We want to win them all really and win a treble in our third season, but it's getting very, very difficult now. So many games of quick succession. Keep on having to rest a lot of players as well. It is pretty, pretty tough for us right now. And I think the pressure is starting to get to us. So we take on City for the second game of today's episode here, the second of three in the FA Cup. Of course, losing to them in the Premier League on Tuesday night. Now taking them on in the weekend in the FA Cup here. First chance fell to us. Balotelli did have the ball in the 
back of the net against one of his former clubs there, but sadly it was correctly ruled out for offside, and it was still goalless. City then had the other couple of chances in the first half, first a shot being saved by Butland, and then De Bruyne's effort going just wide to post on behind for a goal kick, but it was still nil-nil. Final chance half would fall to us though, in the 45th minute, Conor Plianka slides off to sheet down the right-hand side here, he takes it around Mangala, chips the ball into the centre, picks out Conor Plianka, the Ukrainian, but what a save this is by Johar, absolutely superb stop to deny the former Sevilla winger, and he does keep it goalless, so great save there by the English goalkeeper, and it was still nil-nil. But 12 minutes after the restart here, a good chance for us to open the scoring, as Nathaniel Klein finds Ruben Loftus-Cheek, the pair play a 1-2 here, and Klein goes down the right-hand side, the former Liverpool right-back holds off the challenge of David Alaba, the Austrian can't roll the ball off him, Klein drills it across to the far post, and who's there to turn it in? Well, we sung his praises in the last episode, this guy's having an incredible season for us, Marco the magician, Ryan Taller scores once again, Klein drilling it in, there's Ryan Taller at the far post, he couldn't miss really, but either way, Ryan Taller scores once again, his second goal in the FA Cup, and it's City nil, Watford 1, so I really do like this guy as an inside forward, we play him on the left wing despite being a left footed player, but either way, next season possibly switch him to the right hand side, so we can get even more goals, either way, City nil, Watford 1, but when your luck is out, your luck really is out, you saw in the last game what happened in the game against City, the goal we conceded through De Bruyne's goal, well, is this a penalty? I mean, seriously, is this a penalty? A penalty is given there as De Bruyne goes to pass the ball out. I did not think there was any contact on the Belgian there whatsoever, but the referee gave it. Yaya Torre would obviously score, puts it down the middle as Butland dives to his left-hand side. And, you know, we were 12 minutes away from a big win here away at the Etihad Stadium, getting ourselves through to the FA Cup semi-final. It was looking likely. And then to concede that penalty, I mean, I'm sorry, but, you know, sometimes I just have to say this is not really fair because I I really don't think that was a penalty at all. I think he got really harshly done by there. City do equalise through Yaya Torre. And, you know, maybe there was slight contact, but I certainly didn't see it. And City do equalise through Torre from the spot after De Bruyne won it. So, in the last game, of course, De Bruyne scoring that winner for them, which is a hugely deflected shot, which uh, hit off uh, Joe Davis. And for this one, winning a penalty, which, again, I just, I really don't think that was a penalty. Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below if you think it was a penalty. But for me, I, I think we were really harshly done by there. The game sort of lied as well. So, we only had two shots on one on target in that game. Absolute rubbish. We played really well in that one. I think we matched City every step of the way in that game, but either way, City did get themselves a draw in the end. That does mean we'll have a replay as well at Vicarage Road. So that is the last thing we need right now. With such congested fixture list, we're still in free competitions. The last thing we needed was a replay, but that's what we got. We'll have a replay at Vicarage Road in a couple of weeks' time. That is very, very frustrating for us. And again, I was just so annoyed about that game because we were 12 minutes away from winning, getting ourselves through to Wembley in the FA Cup semi-finals, and then for that penalty to be awarded. I'm sorry, but I did not think it was one whatsoever. Still, we take on Ajax for the third and final game of today's episode here in the Champions League round of 16 second leg. Taking on the Dutch side. Obviously, in the first leg away at the Amsterdam Arena, we won by two goals to nil. So, coming into this game, we were feeling very confident, but of course, with two games without a win, starting to feel a little bit sorry for ourselves as well after what happened in the previous two games. The first chance fell to Ajax, but Klassen shot was well saved by Butler and Termahide for a corner. And in the 19th minute here, we had our first chance of the game. Bertrand Traore gets on the ball takes it around his man with the ball spinning, goes for goal. But the former Chelsea man is denied by a simple save by the goalkeeper, so still nil-nil. In the 39th minute here, a good chance for Ajax to take the lead. They need to score at least two goals on the night, and they get the first of which here through Milik, heading in an El Ghazi cross. And unfortunately for us, well, the pressure really is beginning to pay now. We are getting very, very worried. But in the Premier League, losing to City in the FA Cup, failing to get through to the semi-finals, having to take it to a replay at Vicarage Road due to that late penalty. And now in this game here against Ajax, once again having to make changes changes here. Danny Rose gets caught out. I thought I could win the ball with a slide tackle. Didn't do so. El Ghazi holds off Joe Davis, crosses the ball in. Milik heads it in off the post and does make it 1-0 to Ajax. So they'd already got one of the two goals they needed through the number nine and Ajax getting the goal here. Very, very worrying times here at Vicarage Road. But just before half time here, Inyaki Williams goes down the left-hand side, plays it inside to Marco Ryan Taller and relief as the clock ticks into the 45th minute because Marco the Magician scores for the second time in three games and makes it Watford 1, Ajax 1, second time in two games even, to make it Watford 1, Ajax 1 so Williams cuts past his man, rolls it inside to Ryan Taller, says here you go mate, you take this goal, you can score with the weaker right foot and he does just that as well it's his fourth goal in the Champions League for Marco he levels the score, full value to be leveled at the break as well, thought we'd been playing really really well, had more possession and more shots as well, but either way, Watford 1, Ajax 1 and Ryan Taller does put us back on level terms, in the 58th minute though we had to uh, thank Jack Button for this really good save and then El Ghazi blazing the ball over the bar there where he should have scored with the open goal. We're still Watford 1, Ajax 1 as Ajax tried to get themselves back in front in this game, needing to score two more goals once again 
And of course, due to the away goal ruling, had they do that, if they do that, I should say, they would be going through. But once again, Butler makes a really good save there. And as we go on the counter, Bufal finds Birch and Traore through towards Inyaki Williams down the right hand side here. The speedster goes down the wing, chips the ball into the center, it misses everyone. It comes to Bufal at the far post, and Sofian Bufal rifles the ball in, makes it Watford 2, Ajax 1. And with 14 minutes to go, he kicks the corner flag because the Moroccan, who many, many people would probably say hasn't justified his 21.25 million pound price tag, that's a fair thing to say, but we don't really care if he scores important goals. He scores a big one here. This surely ends all threat of Ajax getting themselves back in the game. Watford 2, Ajax 1, and now they need to score three goals in 14 minutes. It's not going to happen, and it is big, big relief here at Vicarage Road because we do return to winning ways after two games about one. We are through to the Champions League quarterfinals. We made very, very hard work of it, that's for sure, but either way, Butler with a couple of big saves in this one, and Buffal picking his spot late on in the game does ensure that we are through to the Champions League quarterfinals. So it may say Watford 4, Ajax 1 on the aggregate scoreline, but the fact of the matter is it was anything other than comfortable, this one. Very, very tough game here at Vicarage Road, but we came through when we needed it most. Buffal scoring a late winner after Ryan Tyler equalised. We are through to the Champions League quarterfinals, and we have done exactly what the board wanted. So delighted with that. It was frustrating. It was tough. We really are beginning to feel the pressure right now. Can we hold on to our lead in the Premier League with eight games to go? Just three points clear of United. Can we continue our defence of the FA Cup as well and stay in that competition after the replay at Vicarage Road, which will be coming in the next episode, I do believe? And can we also cause a shock in the Champions League and get ourselves through to the semi-finals? We'll have to wait and see. That does in the episode, though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like. That is much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.